The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect the official positions of NAMI New Hampshire or the organization's funders. All individuals and personal experiences are different. Please connect with your primary care provider or a mental health professional to seek advice regarding any condition you may experience. NAMI New Hampshire does not endorse or advise specific treatments. For 24-7 crisis help, contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or text NAMI to the crisis text line at 741-741 or call 911. Welcome to the 603 Stories Podcast, a monthly mental health podcast made by young adults for young adults, where we share stories, make connections, and find hope. Any ads throughout this podcast are not associated with 603 Stories or the 603 Stories Podcast. There will be sensitive subjects discussed during this podcast. Should you need them, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 1-800-273-8255. Or you can text the crisis text line by texting 741 741. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the 603 Stories podcast, a mental health podcast made by young adults for young adults. I'm Jace. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'll be one of your hosts for this episode. Hello, hello. I am the other host of this podcast, Heather. My pronouns are she, they. And before we drive, dive into our topic for Pride Month, discussing expression and identity. I'd just like to send out a reminder for all of our listeners that Jace and I are not mental health professionals. We are simply two young adults who are passionate about mental health and enjoy sharing these important discussions with you. So expression has many different meanings, but today we will be focusing on these two in particular. Expression being the process of making known one's thoughts or feelings, and expression being the conveying of feeling through a work of art, performance, a piece of music, or facial expression and tone of voice. Awesome. Now let's welcome our guest for this episode, Emily. Hi, everyone. Uh, My name's Emily. My pronouns are they, them. I am a disabled queer artist. Uh, And I was interested in being in this podcast today, um, first because I've made some of the art for this podcast. um, So it's nice to be on this side of the podcast. Um, And I have been on a lifelong mental health journey, and I definitely use art as my main form of expression. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Our first question for you is, what does expression mean to you personally and as an artist? Expression to me personally, um, um, essentially like a way to show others how you're feeling on the inside. It's a way to um, showcase your identities or how you're feeling without necessarily saying them. And as an artist, I feel that art is a great way to capture um, your reality in the time that you're experiencing it without necessarily having to uh, put into words exactly how you're feeling or what you're going through. That is such a great definition. (laughs) Would you say that art has been an integral tool for you, um, you know, navigating your own identity or um, figuring out who who you are? Absolutely. Um, Would you say it's a necessary tool for navigating your identity or has been, you know, a big tool in figuring out who, who you are as an individual? Yeah. Uh, Definitely. I um, 
especially struggle with uh, trying to verbalize um, how I'm feeling or what I'm going through. Um, I find it really difficult to put into words exactly how I'm feeling. Um, all these different forms of expressions are a way for me to like tell other people um, either what I'm going through or how I feel about myself. Um, and it has definitely led me to um, communities that express in the same way. Awesome. Do you mind explaining a little bit about what your practice looks like, what your process looks like, um, some of the mediums that you might use? Absolutely. Um, I typically use um, digital art or painting, mostly in watercolor and uh, acrylic painting. Um, I definitely use art in a bunch of different ways versus just to have fun. Um, I do create a lot of silly art and that's just like a really fun thing to do. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world and personally. Um, so it's nice to create space where you can kind of just let go and be a little silly. Um, but it's also helped me capture moments where uh, maybe I'm not feeling as great um, or uh, like feeling down um, and it's a way for me to kind of put to paper what I'm feeling and it helps me work through those like tougher bigger feelings without having to like sit down and analyze it you kind of just free flow um, and you get it out it's on paper you kind of put it away <laughs> and kind of leave it there for a bit. I remember recently I was talking to a colleague about how journaling is such an important Thing for people to do because it's a way for you to put down on paper what you're thinking inside and really give you a chance to kind of visualize it, see it out there in the world and then let it go. And it sounds like you use art in the way that a lot of people use journaling to kind of work through what you're going through. But what I love about your use of art for this is you have like this masterpiece or this creation at the end of it. Um, that you can share with others and show them exactly what you're feeling. Whereas when I journal, I, I would not share that with other people because it seems so intimate and personal, but artists just have this wonderful ability to kind of open up and bridge those gaps um, in the community by sharing their artwork and expressing themselves in a way that is so relatable. What exactly does sharing your work do for you? Like, ha what, what is, what do you get out of it? I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's definitely a way to say things without saying things. Um, if that makes sense that, like I said, it can be difficult to, you know, verbalize your feelings or, you know, verbalize everything that's going on in your busy head of yours. Um, and it's kind of open to interpretation. You can make your art incredibly specific that there's no real question of what your art is about. And can also, you know, you can be a completely abstract artist where it's totally up to interpretation, but you deep net down know the meaning of it. Have you found community through doing art? Yeah, I actually have. Um, I do have a very small Instagram, but I've connected with um, a bunch of other disabled queer artists. Um, there was actually recently a virtual fair that I wasn't a part of, but I got to see for the first time. It's been going on during the pandemic. That was all um, sick and disabled artists. Um, so it was really great that we I found that and it was able to build a small community of, you know, it's people all over the country, but um, going through the same things as you and you know we all express different differently everyone has a different art style and different mediums um, but we all do one thing is that we express ourselves through art that's amazing what what was it like for you finding um, a community where you felt so represented or understood yes in a, in a yeah. world where most of us are not represented or understood or many of us aren't yeah it's very validating to find communities like that um, that you really feel that you fit into um, 
the friends are great and everything, but if they're not going through the same exact thing you are, um, it can often feel like you're alone, um, you're going through um, a tough thing alone, or you can't confide in people close to you because they don't really get it. Um, so when you find these like small pockets of community, um, of people who truly understand what it's like to, um, you know, live as a queer person or live as a disabled person or live as a trans person, um, it's very validating and it makes you feel like, it makes you realize you truly are not alone. Um, and there are resources and people that are willing to help you through the tough times. Thank you. I have a lot of feelings about that <laughs> that I might not be able to process at the moment. <laughs> And those are all such important things. And honestly, the communities that you mentioned, the queer community, the trans community, the disabled mm -hmm. community, each of those communities has a very specific way of expressing themselves that is also so diverse and beautiful at the same time. Um, and I was just wondering, how does expression in these communities play a role in your life as well? even outside of being an artist or as well as being an artist? Yeah, it definitely gives me a boost of confidence. Um, I feel like especially where we are in kind of rural, small town America, um, it's very easy to feel like an outlier. Um, but when you find other people expressing in ways that like you would like to, or you just like, you know, you really like someone's style or how they dress or you like how they do their hair a certain way. It like gives me the confidence to be like, oh, I can do that. And it, same thing with art. I have tried so many different mediums that I don't think I would have um, if I didn't see other people doing it or if I didn't see people like putting their sketches out. Um, I always feel like I hide my sketches. I don't want anyone to see anything except the very final product. Um, but plenty of people make not bad art, but like unfinished art and they still share it and they get it out there. And it gives you the confidence of like, oh, this is something I can work towards to be better or feel better or like feel better in my skin. Um, and it's not, you know, you don't start at the end goal. It's really a work in progress. And able to see like more of the reality, especially in a world where we're navigating so much on social media and the internet. Um, there's so much ability to filter out the in-between, the process, the mistakes, um, you know, and only portray the parts of yourself that, you know, you want to portray. Um, so I think being able to see those vulnerable moments, see those little, you know, blips, you know, maybe something that's imperfect or something that builds into something more down the line is extremely valuable and validating. And I think kind of going back to me saying like, oh, I have a lot of feelings that I don't know how to express. I think a lot of that is, you know, how I find myself representative with, within like queer disabled communities, within artist communities. Um, and especially because we are in the New Hampshire bubble, you know, it doesn't always feel like there are other folks out there. Um, you know, so knowing that there are areas that we can visit or, um, you know, interact with virtually is um, very comforting. And Emily, I really liked how you talked about people showcasing their works of art that aren't necessarily perfect um, and talking about the process of how they get to the end um, and how a lot of times we don't feel comfortable sharing those moments, especially on social media. And I find that so interesting because I feel like people do the same exact thing with their mental health. They won't show the imperfect moments and they won't show the moments of struggle, they only show the final product. And just like art, people will always wonder, well, how do I get there? And why can't I do that? Um, this person is so talented or this person is so healthy, but 
really you're only seeing a fraction of that person's world. And when you look deeper, you don't see all the hard work that goes into getting there. Yeah, I feel like um, social media can be a really double-edged sword because you can get into just viewing everyone's perfect life. Um, and it's hard not to feel down about that when that happens. Um, but there are plenty of people who do post about the struggles of life, um, whether that be mental health, physical health, um, you know, everything in between. Um, I think that's something that I benefited from a lot was seeing other people, um, you know, following for me, disabled creators on like TikTok and Instagram, um, especially as a young person. Um, it's very easy to feel like, oh, I'm so young. Why am I struggling with all of this? Like, I'm supposed to be young and carefree and like finding other people who are going through the same thing as you is just like, you know, it shares the weight of everything. It makes you feel like it's not all on your shoulders. It's like, it's a community effort. It's on all of us and we can all, you know, struggle together and also heal together and also support each other. Yeah. It takes such strength to be so vulnerable in front of so many people, um, especially online. But I've always noticed that whenever I see people like that on my own feed, that is what gives me hope. That's what makes me realize that it does get better and I can make it. And um, as long as I keep trying and keep pushing myself, um, obviously not pushing myself too much because self-care, but <laughs> as long as I keep trying, um, I'll make it. Can you explain what your personal experience has been like, um, you know, sharing those moments of vulnerability? Obviously, you know, you've made some of our podcast art. Um, you post some very personal pieces of art that you've made. Um, and obviously today you're here on our podcast sharing <laughs> about all of those things. Um, so what, what has that looked like for you? Yeah, I feel like previously before I started to like really break down my own barriers and be vulnerable both online and also like with friends, um, I was definitely a person to bottle everything up. Um, I didn't want to, you know, trouble anyone with any of my problems. I was like, I've got this, I can do it, it's fine. And truly that is not the way to handle um, anything. Your friends are there to support you. Um, so once I started really being vulnerable and like not caring about how other people may view whatever I'm posting um, and really realizing like I post for myself and myself only, I make my art for myself and myself only. If other people like it, great. If they don't, that's fine too. <laughs> um, it's really helped me like release everything that was inside of me. Um, you know, it's important to talk to people. It's important to tell people what you're going through because people are there to step up and help you if you need it. And similar to journaling, um, like posting on Instagram is a kind of way of like sort of journaling, um, but also just Reading. sharing. Yeah. So posting online has, um, I always think about like when I'm going through a tough time that I want to be the person that I needed when I was younger like I want to be the person um the young queer child needed or I want to be the person that I needed in high school and part of that is just making myself seen um the more people that talk more openly about their mental health um the more likely other people will start talking about their mental health as well um, and start seeking help if they need it. Um, I, when I was going through a pretty tough physical illness and I was posting online a ton of that, um, I have a very stigmatizing illness. I have um, 
a digestive disease and I had absolutely no shame. I was like, if I have to be the person that embarrasses myself so someone else will go to the doctor, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll tell everyone my life story if it gets one person to the doctor for like early detection. Um, and that's kind of how I feel for like mental health as well. Is that if I'm vulnerable and other people see that it's okay to struggle, then they're more likely to reach out. Especially since these communities that we've been talking about right now, um, people with mental illness or physical illness or people in the queer community, these are all people that have been pushed into the shadows for so long and intentionally told, no, it's not something that you talk about because of stigma. The fact that you have the strength to stand up and showcase yourself in order to help others just goes to show what an important pillar in our community and even beyond our community because you've taken the social media, you are. And I just wanna take a moment to thank you because it may not seem like you're doing the most out there, but even with every small action you make, it could have a huge impact on someone's life. And I can just tell that you must be such a positive light for so many people out there. So thank you again. <laughs> I really appreciate both those statements, both from M and Jace. Um, especially, I just took a second to kind of reflect on the point of us being here. Um, you know, 603 stories is all about, you know, breaking down stigma, sharing hope, um, and really being able to, you know, broadcast strength and vulnerability um, so that we can reach others. Um, so I'm just very happy to, you know, in a state where we are clearly sharing that we don't always feel we have representation, we don't feel seen necessarily, we feel, you know, maybe pushed into the shadows um, that there are people doing the work um, and making a difference. I like to call it, and this is definitely co-opted from another disabled queer creator, um, the creator of Rebirth Garments, um, is being radically visible in whatever way that means to you. Um, so radically visibly queer, um, though there's no absolutely no one way to look queer, but however that means to you, looking radically disabled, um, use your mobility aids, use the braces, use anything you need. Um, and that, that goes the same for like uh, being radically visible and dealing with your mental health. Um, you know, I carry around like a small pharmacy with me anywhere I go and I have absolutely no medication shame. Like take what you need because someone else could see you doing that and then that validates them and makes them feel okay that they have to do the same thing. And because you deserve to not have to hide. This is you just existing. And if that bothers other people, that's their problem, not yours. <laughs> it is not your job to make other people comfortable. Speaking of comfort, how does expression create a sense of comfort for you? Whether that be expression in your queer community or expression in, um, mental, physical disability, how does expression, how does expressing yourself make you feel more comfortable in your own skin? There's definitely comfort in owning my identities. The more I express, first off, it takes the weight off of like everything I'm bottling up inside of me, um, where I can just like express myself however I want to, whether that be like wearing different clothes one day or you know, dyeing my hair, um, or creating, like, a nice painting, um, there's definitely comfort in, like, letting go of your expectations or other people's expectations and just expressing how you want, and then, like, the more you do that, the more you feel, like, comfortable, or at least for me, claiming my own identity is, like, the more art I create, the more comfortable I am getting into, like, bigger and harder pieces and like really challenging myself but it's the same thing with like how I dress of like 
you know, it's little by little. I um, have recently changed my entire wardrobe, but it was something I feel like I soft launched. <laughs> um, I slowly rolled out this new wardrobe, but it's like little by little, you get more comfortable and you're like, oh, maybe I'll try out this. Maybe I'll try out this type of shorts. Maybe I'll shop in the men's section this time. Um, and little by little, you find comfort in really claiming who you are. How would you say these types of exploration has impacted you, um, you know, with community or relationships? Um, Has it been something that's been a strain? Has it been something that's been a benefit? It's definitely been both a strain and a benefit. Um, I definitely have like a lot of anxiety around how other people perceive my expressions. Um, You know, most people who are queer and are out will say that you never come out once, you constantly keep coming out. Um, You come out to new people, you have to correct people. Um, Sometimes you come out to yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes your friends out you to yourself. (laughs) Um, It's definitely been difficult navigating. Um, It's hard to take this step um, of, say, coming out to, you know, someone you're interested in dating or even friends that you've known for a long time and not knowing how they're going to react. But taking those steps also help you find your community of if people aren't willing to accept you as you are, as your full self, in my opinion, they're not worth it. The more you talk about what you're going through, the more you're going to find people who are ready to accept you with open arms um, and help you navigate it. Like I have a great group of friends that um, I came out to and they were like, oh, let's, like Heather has come over to help me clean out my entire closet, which seems like a very simple thing, but it was not a simple thing whatsoever. But doing doing the soft launch of yeah. Let's try this on with a few comfortable folks, a few safe people before I yeah. launch myself into the universe. I appreciate that. A lot of that resonates with me, um, you know, especially Emily and I are connected outside of the podcast, um, you know, and for me, um, becoming more vulnerable, becoming more open. Again, it just like you has been a both a benefit and a strain um there are definitely folks that I've kind of noticed like we're done you know I can take a step back from this relationship and you know that sucks kind of in the moment but ends up being really beneficial in the long run and it also has been something that has made me grow so much more in the relationships that I am in and honestly build like a much more intimate love and trust with the folks in my life Um, you know especially for folks who you know maybe I was bottling around and just kind of held back on expressing certain parts of myself due to you know my own anxieties and you know just concern about how a person might react and then you know find a finally breaking that seal and opening up and having them say like okay cool let's do it like I I like that I'll support you I'll you know whatever it might be um only grows that relationship um you know the risk of having a negative reaction is worth the the connection that builds um the strength that it builds, the hope and love that it builds. You, you're just giving me a lot to think about. <laughs> Emily, planting seeds everywhere they go. <laughs> Speaking of seeds, something I used to carry with me a lot, like mentally, it was um, a new seed can't root with dead roots in the way. Of sometimes you just have to shed what doesn't serve you anymore in order for you to grow. New seed can't root with old roots in the way. I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just going to have like a, a moment over here. <laughs> I want that like on a giant poster, one of those ones that like you have in your office that's just the motivation you need <laughs> every day. Hang in there, cat. <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, I'll start making some motivational posters. 
Oh my gosh. New job. <laughs> New career opportunity for you. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for your vulnerability um, and your honesty. Um, I really feel like I'm leaving this conversation in a better space than I came in. Um, so just thank you you Emily and thank you Jace and all of our listeners for creating a space where we can share and thrive and break down the stigma in our communities um it's just build each other up at the same time yes that's what I that's what I love that's what we're here for thank you all and have a great morning afternoon evening or night (laughs) and thank you so much Emily for coming on and joining us Thanks for listening to the 603 Stories Podcast, a monthly podcast made by young adults for young adults. You can check out 603 Stories on Facebook or Instagram or at our website, 603stories.org. Just a reminder, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline can be reached at 800-273-8255. That's 800-273-TALK. And the crisis text line can be reached by texting to 741 741- 741. Remember, you can make connections, get help, and find hope through 603 Stories.